Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. By the authority of the gift statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends, it is my privilege and pleasure as the Director of the Open University in Ireland to welcome you all to the 13th of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held in 2023. I'm also delighted to welcome to the ceremony today our special guests and key supporters of the university here, who have found time in their busy diaries to be with us today. These include the President of the Open University Students Association, Margaret Greenway, the Chief Nursing Officer for Northern Ireland, Maria Michael Gorm, the Director of the Royal College of Nursing in Northern Ireland, Rita Devlin, from the Northern Ireland Assembly, Dr. Kiva Archibald, MLA, the Chief Executive of Libraries Northern Ireland, Jim O'Hagan, the Chief Executive of INTHUS, Ireland's National Adult Learning Organisation, Derville Lawless, from the Cong Irish Congress of Trade Unions, Julie Gorman, as well as colleagues from the Department for the Economy, the Department of Health, the Northern Ireland Social Care Council, employers from the public and private sectors, and our colleagues from the further education colleges right across Northern Ireland. And of course, a very special welcome to our honorary graduates, Mr. Gary Lightbody and Ms. Anna Burns. Anna and Gary, we are delighted to be able to honour you both today. Each year, the Open University awards a range of qualifications that you have all worked very hard for, from certificates right through to doctorates. And it's been 50 years since the, first, the Open University held its first ceremony in 1973. And today you will join thousands of graduates who have been presented for their qualifications at ceremonies like this. For my colleagues, and certainly for me, these ceremonies are the highlights of our year because we are celebrating your success. Ceremonies like this are being held throughout England, as well as in Scotland, Wales, Dublin, and today here in Belfast. You're graduating from the largest university in Europe, and we have extraordinary scale, scope, and reach. That success is down to what you, our graduates, achieve but not just the qualification you're being presented with today, but the difference that you're going to make with that qualification. Now, it goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of you, our graduates, your families and your loved ones, as well as for the university and my colleagues, who I hope you feel have nurtured and supported you throughout your studies. And you could be forgiven for thinking that this occasion is so important that it needs to be very quiet and very solemn. Well, you're very, very wrong in every sense. This is a day of celebration for you. So I would be really, really disappointed if anyone crosses this stage to anything less than thunderous applause, or whatever way you choose to express your enthusiasm and support for the people that you're here to cheer. So with that in mind, could I ask all of today's graduates who are able to do so to please stand? Right now, families and friends and Open University colleagues, let's start today's ceremony by giving our amazing graduates a huge round of applause. Thank you, graduates. Please, please sit down. Well, I, I, knew, I knew the Waterfront Hall wouldn't disappoint us. That's the level about right. So when everybody's crossing the stage, that's what we want to hear. Uh, so thank you very much, friends and, and families, for doing that. Now, there's one more way you can show your appreciation to your graduate today. If you post messages or photographs on social media, please be sure to use the hashtag OUFamily to share your congratulations and celebrations with the wider Open University across the globe. So, just in terms of running order, today's ceremony will begin with the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Mr. Gary Lightbody. Mr. Michael Barr, Assistant Director, Student Success and External Engagement at the Open University in Ireland, will present Gary Lightbody, and then Gary will sign the graduate's book and make a reply. 
Then we will see the presentation of those graduates who have gained higher degrees, postgraduate diplomas, and first degrees of Bachelors of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws. They will be presented by Mrs. Tara Craig, Assistant Director, Marketing Communications at the Open University in Ireland. We will then award the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Ms. Anna Burns and Dr. Heather Richardson, Senior Lecturer and Staff Tutor in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, will present Anna Burns, who will then sign the Honorary Graduates Book and make a reply. Then we will continue our presentation of graduates with those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees and Diplomas of Higher Education. And they will be presented by Mr John Addy, Assistant Director for Planning and Resources at the Open University. I will conclude the ceremony with a final address to our graduates. And now I call upon Mr Michael Barr to present the first of the honorary degrees. National Director, colleagues, graduates, guests. The words and music of Gary Lightbody are instantly recognized and loved by people across the globe. Inspired in his teens by the late Seamus Heaney, Gary's lyrics have a strong sense of place and belonging with a deep love for people, their hopes, and their futures. Take, for example, this verse from I Think of Home. The punched out teeth of Irish history Mistakes were made, let's leave it there. But there's one thing we can all agree on. There's beauty north, south, east and west. Gary's list of career achievements in music are many, including five UK platinum albums, an award for chasing cars being the UK's most played track of the 21st century, an Ivor Novello award for the song Run, Grammy, Brit Awards and Mercury Music Prize nominations, the 2019 Oh Yeah Legend Award with his band Snow Patrol, the 2008 Oh Yeah Inspire Wellbeing Outstanding Contribution to Music Award, Meteor Awards in 2007 including Best Irish Band, Best Irish Live Performance and Best Irish Album for Eyes Open as well as an OBE in the 2020 New Year's Honours list for his services to music and to charity in Northern Ireland. However, it is for his wider contributions to people and society that the Open University acknowledges Gary Lightbody today. Our mission is to be open to people, places, methods and ideas. And that mission is exemplified by the actions and most importantly, the impact of Gary Lightbody through his philanthropic work throughout his career. To open up opportunities for songwriters, musicians and aspiring music professionals in Northern Ireland, Gary drew forward his vision for a physical hub in Belfast city centre with rehearsal and performance space, a recording studio and office space from 2004 onwards. In May 2007, the OEA oh yeah Music Centre opened its doors and since then has proved to be an exemplary social enterprise helping young and old across Northern Ireland engage with music. It was a simple idea to create opportunities for people in Northern Ireland to get access to an industry that was not always known for crossing the Irish Sea. Aside of core financial support and knowledge of what was needed, Gary had the unique skill of bringing together fellow musicians, creatives and numerous volunteers to make Oh Yeah a reality. In 2019, Gary established the Lightbody Foundation to help local and community-based charities in Northern Ireland provide life-enhancing uh, services to children, citizens in need. He set this up at a time when the political situation in Northern Ireland had been absent for well over a thousand days and services for mental health, special needs education, young people, elder elderly people with life difficulties and suicide awareness needed support. Since, since its inception, the Lightbody Foundation has supported many charities across Northern Ireland, not just financially, but also by raising awareness for the day-to-day -day work they do for people in challenging circumstances. In recent years, the Foundation has also supported worthy charities in Great Britain, particularly in Scotland and in the US. 
Gary has also addressed many high profile events to highlight social issues, particularly mental health, poverty, homelessness, and the need for politics to work for people in Northern Ireland. With such a wide contribution, it is no surprise that we honour Gary Lightbody here today. So, National Director, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Gary Lightbody. Thank you, Michael. That was the longest two hours of my life. <laughs> um, how's everybody doing? You all right? Yeah. Are you? The, the only way I know how to do this is like a gig, so... <laughs> um, I did write some words, but uh, it's strange. I, when I walk onto the stage, which I have done many times, I'm not nervous, but just sitting there, staring out into the crowd <laughs> was more nerve-wracking <laughs> than I've ever had in this room. Um, people go to most universities for a variety of reasons, to meet new people, to join clubs and societies, to escape their hometowns, to take those first steps into a wider world, to learn how to drink a yard of ale, <laughs> and also maybe if we're not too tired from all the clubs we joined and the drinking with all our new pals, maybe we'll go to class. Although I might just be describing my own university experience of nearly 30 years ago. But like all of you, that study in the open university system, you do it for only one reason, to learn, to broaden your minds, um, to give yourselves the best chance to change whatever circumstances might be challenging in your lives. Every one of you went to university for the sole reason to learn, and I am in awe of you all. You treat a day with respect when you try to learn something in it. So you have all already made better choices than me. So how could I dare give you any advice? I mean, I'm going to, <laughs> but you can of course choose to ignore it all. Um, I always feel weird offering advice anyway because I'm a billion light years away from the finished article. But here goes. Just two things I wanted to say to you. The first one, you already know because you're here. Hard work beats almost everything else. Every, <laughs> um, I meant to write every single genius that I know, but I've written every snuggle genius. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, just a really good hugger, I guess. Um, every single genius that I know um, and I, I know it's difficult to listen to, it really is. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, and I'm honored to know quite a few, especially in the music world, are the hardest, are also the hardest working people I have ever known. Great ideas are one thing, but you have to have determination, character, and sheer bloody will to bring them to life. An idea always has to be followed by hard work, for if not, it's just a thought you had once. But also, work isn't everything. And success can be as simple as living the life you want and not living the life other people expect you to live. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. So be kind to yourselves. And this is really what I wanted to say. Be kind to your hearts and to your minds, even more so to your minds, because while broken hearts take some time to heal, 
Broken minds can take what seems like forever, something I've had some experience of. So treat yourselves with care. Work hard, sure, but don't work yourselves into the ground at the cost of everything else in your life. And yes, the balance between hard work and finding peace and joy in your life is a tricky one. My solution was to keep doing my hobby belligerently until somebody paid me for it. But that took 10 years. But even so, I am very lucky. I know that not many people get to make their hobby into their job. But if you get the chance to, and I hope that you do, grab it and hold on to it like an otter trying to crack open an oyster. And if you can't, and you end up doing a job you might not love, because we all have to at some point in our lives, for your mind and for your heart, don't ever stop doing the thing you love and just do it for the love of it. Try to keep a piece of that for yourself and for your soul. I hope you all get what you want out of life. I hope you all find success and peace and joy and happiness. What a start you have made on that journey by getting a degree from this, the People's University. Thank you to the Open University for giving me this. And it is an honor to be part of your graduating class. Congratulations to you all. Mission Director, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and postgraduate diplomas and have been able to attend here today. I present to you for the degree of Master of the Arts in Creative Writing, Charlotte Beatty. <laughs> Jacqueline Brown. Michael Keeley. I present to you for the degree of Master of the Arts in Crime and Justice, Nikki Croft. Present to you for the degree of Master of the Arts in History, William Connolly Newlands. <laughs> Danielle French. Present to you for the degree of Master of the Arts in Music, Mark Wardle. <laughs> Martin McGinley. I present to you for the degree of Master of the Arts in Philosophy, 
Mike Anderson. For the degree of Master of Laws, Kathleen Doyle. I present to you for the degree of Master of Education, Maria Daly. For the degree of Master of Laws, Rubilin Francisco. For the degree of Master of Science in Computing, Damien Connolly. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Ethan Brown. <laughs> Patrick McSorley. For the degree of Master of Science in Forensic Psychological Studies, Donna Douglas. For the degree of Master of Science in Mental Health Sciences, Deborah Bond. For the degree of Postgraduate Diploma in Social Work, Suzanne Baskin. <laughs> Deborah Burns. Nation Director, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Laws degrees and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony programme. I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of the Arts, Laura Case. Victoria Crummy. <laughs> Miriam Cullen. <laughs> Hannah Gilly. Jeanette Kane. <laughs> Shauna McCluskey. <laughs> Carrie McDonald. Kira McKenna. <laughs> Gillian Moore. <laughs> Emma.
Emma Mulholland. Andrew Proctor. Deborah Schmidt. Lindsay Allister. Cheryl Baker. Evelina Bednorczyk. Donard Breeden. Naomi Campbell, <laughs> Nikki Cohn, <laughs> Jessica Cummings. Emma de Souza, John Donnelly, Tracy Gibson. Stella Gill, Aaron Grant. Elizabeth Greer, <laughs> Jordan Gerard Her Herty, <laughs> Teresa Kelly Dodds. Antoinette Maxwell, <laughs> Matthew McAdam. McAtemney, <laughs> Terry McClinton, <laughs> Louise McCullough. Gehan Sharon McGibbon Accepting 
a Bachelor of Arts on behalf of the late Mr. Connor McHugh, his wife, Brogan McHugh. Samantha MacIver, <laughs> Mary McNally, <laughs> Sinead Malloy. Shannon Murray, <clears throat> Sarah Marie O'Connell, <clears throat> Dara Patterson. Guna <laughs> Jamie Robinson John Rooney. <laughs> Danielle Story. <laughs> Emily Thompson. Michael Thompson. <laughs> Paul Carson. <laughs> Lynn Larkin. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, I present Neil Glasgow. <laughs> Jason Brady. <laughs> Sudat Pettigam. Present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Caitlin Bartlett. <laughs> Wazim Azam. <laughs> Lydia. Sivetkova.
Louise Doolan. Martin Hagen. Hagan. Hagan. Eva Simpson. Montana Spence yeah. Kristen Sterrett National Director, colleagues, graduates, guests. Anna Burns is one of the most original and compelling authors at work today. Her writing chronicles recent history in Northern Ireland in vivid and imaginative detail. In unusual and unsettling prose, her novels examine how conflict plays out in individuals and community life and often tackle dark themes with dark humour. Born in Belfast, Anna's upbringing was indelibly marked by the experience of the Troubles. At one point, her family were evacuated while homes were burnt down across their Catholic neighbourhood. She was an avid reader from an early age, delighting in the adventures that could be experienced through books. In her mid-teens, she became known locally for being the girl who read while she walked a characteristic which eventually made its way into her fiction. Anna took classes in English while working as a copy taker for Belfast newspapers. A memorable teacher fired her enthusiasm for literature and she later moved to London to study Russian, though this was short-lived. She did not really begin to commit to writing until her 30s, when a series of transformative moments sparked her creativity and focus into life. The result was her first book, No Bones, set in her childhood home of Ardoin. Beginning with bombs exploding and troops arriving, Burns explores how the mounting brutality impacts on Amelia Lovett and her family. Combining comedy and pathos, generous understanding and grotesque violence, the book established Anna's characteristic voice and subject matter. It was nominated for the Orange Prize for Fiction and won the Royal Society of Literature's Winifred Holtby Memorial Prize. This was followed by Little Constructions, using the story of a dysfunctional family and criminal gang to observe abuse, trauma and violence, especially against women. She has also published the novella, Mostly Hero, a fable about love and relationships, told through the genre of cartoon heroes and villains. In the last decade, Anna's life has often been shaped by the experience of illness and chronic pain. This perhaps makes her most famous achievement, Milkman, all the more extraordinary. It documents the life of an unnamed young woman as she is shadowed and stalked by an older man in an unnamed city, which parallels Belfast. 
an account of oppression and surveillance. It explores what it means to live in fear, unable to trust, but also suggests how to resist and survive, particularly through humour. Milkman won the first ever Orwell Prize for Fiction, the National Book Critics Circle Award for Fiction, the International Dublin Literary Award, and the Christopher Ewart Briggs Memorial Prize. It was also the recipient of the Man Booker Prize, making Anna the first writer from Northern Ireland to receive this award. She has subsequently been a fellow at the Seamus Heaney Centre, the Centre for Creative Writing at Queen's University, and appointed fellow at the Royal Society of Literature. A unique and brilliant writer, Anna's extraordinary command of the vernacular transforms language in surprising ways, and her work uses black comedy to interrogate the worst aspects of human nature without flinching. It is an honour to pay tribute to her exceptional literary achievements, and I'll go off script to say that if you haven't read her books, you really should. National Director, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Anna Burns. Goodness, nerve wracking. I'll just get my other glasses, excuse me. <laughs> um. okay. National Director, members of staff, graduates, graduands, families, and friends. Hello. I thank the university for conferring this great honour upon me. And I thank you, Dr. Heather Richardson, for those really wonderful, lovely words. Um, thank you. I remember one evening when I was about nine or 10, I was in the living room playing. There were some siblings upstairs playing. There were other siblings out in the street playing. My mother was at bingo and my father was in the kitchen making us all chips. The TV was on and two men were discussing something. I wasn't listening because, you know, why would I? Two men discussing something, I'm 10. And then I realized they were making reference to being at school. That's how my child mind interpreted their words. They were sitting there talking away happily. I could hardly believe my ears or my eyes. I shouted to my father, to come out of the kitchen and explain this to me. I won't have to do this, will I? Was my unspoken anguish to peel. My father came out and had a watch and he said, it's that new way of learning. He didn't elaborate and I was so horrified at the thought of adults still going to school that I didn't press for details. I believe, and I'm pretty sure that was my introduction to the Open University. <laughs> Two men talking about it happily. That wasn't the mindset of my world. Libraries made sense, not just to me, to everybody I knew. Books made sense, but institutions of learning and voluntarily enrolling in them, absolutely a resounding no. Now, this was about ingrained perspective. And in my environment, you weren't supposed to, you weren't expected to pursue further education. And for that reason, your mind just simply wasn't open to considering it. My experience of learning establishments as a child and then a young teenager was violence and an awful lot of it. There were these were places of, and organizations full of frightening, out of control adults, mostly adults. Um, my schooling was also during the height of the troubles in the 70s, which definitely didn't help. Sometimes you couldn't get up to them because of what was going on out in the street. It was a sporadic education 
and the prevailing mindset was that you put up with it because you have to, you get over it when you're 16 and can get a job and then that's when you properly live your life. I used to Mitch almost all the time, bizarrely with my school books, which I would sit with somewhere and I'd enjoy going through them and doing the exercises. So it was a type of distance learning in, in a way. <laughs> like those men on the TV, I was, I was really happy to be learning, but never once was I able to make the distinction between education and environment and then come to realize that it was the environment and a lot of authority figures in it that was putting me off. I did leave school at 16 and that was and still is one of the most glorious days of my life. <laughs> Not long afterwards, again bizarrely, I took myself downtown to night classes. I don't know what propelled me to do this. It didn't seem part of my psyche to do it or even to know that night classes existed until suddenly, miraculously, I did know. I took to this way of learning at once. The classes were part-time. You could choose your subjects. You could fit them in around your circumstances. And everyone who was there wanted to be there. They weren't getting it over with. This puts me in mind now of the Open University. Since those days, two of my siblings have completed their degrees through the Open University and they sing the praises of it to the rooftops. I've, all, I've also met others from my past who left school like me as soon as they could and for the same reasons, only to return to study in later life and achieve through the Open University. It's all turned around now, one of them said to me, and I knew she meant our perspective on learning as well as education itself opening up. I wish everyone here a really wonderful, fabulous day of celebration and may all of you graduands and graduates enjoy your success and continue to find true fulfillment ahead. I feel I almost can't give advice because I, I also feel qualified to and when I do I sometimes just start blushing um, because I've made what seemed to be so many mistakes myself, but, but this often led me to something else. As, as I said to a few people today, I, I tend to follow my intuition, and intuition really doesn't give you the whole plan. It just gives you a few steps ahead, or maybe just one step. Um, but I wish, to, I wish you all the, all the success in the world, whether you're completing your studies today or taking them further. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. National Director, continuing the presentation of graduates, I shall now present those who have gained a Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education, and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony programme. I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Nadia Kandria. Oscar Falconer.
Rhea Johnston. <laughs> Melissa Kingsley. <laughs> Declan McAleese. Richard O'Connor. <laughs> Paul Riley. <laughs> Lisa Seaton. Paul Alexander. <laughs> Deborah Armstrong. <laughs> Jonathan Bailey. Lizanne Bullen. <laughs> Katrina Cooper. <laughs> Michael Curran. Michael Derletta. Christopher Donnelly. Megan Drury. Kerry Louise Edgar. <laughs> Jamie Fenning. <laughs> Kevin Finnegan. Philippa Holmes. <laughs> Terry Houston. <laughs> Caroline Hutchinson. James Kerr. <laughs> Shana Kubelinskate. <laughs> Yvonne Laverty. Niall Lawler. Danielle Lennon. Nina Lilliman. Magdalena Wobazinska. <laughs> Ma 
Noto Lugalenyi. Mary McBride. Patrick McBride. David McConkey. Orla McConville. Andrew Mojimsey. Lisa McGonnell. Sheila Monaghan. Robert Monaghan. Georgia Monteith. Ryan O'Donnell. Ivan Filaretu. <laughs> Caitlin Reed Gervin. <laughs> Peter Rusk. Christina Sherman Haninen. <laughs> Cara Shaw. <laughs> Nick Townsend. John Marco Zenzola. <laughs> Neil Dempster. <laughs> Marion Muir. Peter Smith. <laughs> I present to you for the I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing, Katie Burns. Jacqueline Clark. <laughs> Emma Crory. <laughs> Susan Patricia Doherty. Kiara Friars. Yeah. 
Lois Gaffney. <laughs> Helen Graham. <laughs> Amy Kennedy. Rebecca Lawson. Yeah. Lauren Moffat. Yeah. Kirsty Moore. Glynis Munn. <laughs> Brona O'Neill. <laughs> Jill O'Neill. Bobby Scott. <laughs> Susan Smith. <laughs> Haley Old. Carol Callahan, <laughs> Kerry Cardinale, <laughs> Ashley Cole. Joanne Cole. <laughs> Talitha Collins. <laughs> Rachel Corrigan. <laughs> Stacy Cunningham. Sophie Dickinson. <laughs> Chloe Dixon. <laughs> Hannah Digney. Mary Farron. <laughs> Maria Fitzsimons. <laughs> Emma Fleck. <laughs> Karen Glover. Ashley Graham. <laughs> Brendan Hanvey. <laughs> Brenda Harrison. Janine Hayes. Yeah. 
Rebecca Heron. Jacqueline Hill. <laughs> Patricia James. <laughs> Ashley Jones. Owen Killen. <laughs> Donna Lennon. <laughs> Emma Liggett. <laughs> Amy Lilly <laughs> Rebecca Mackin Kelly Mainland. <laughs> Catherine Martin. <laughs> Kelly McAdam. Stephen McAlinden. <laughs> Amy McAvoy. <laughs> Christopher McConville. Sarah Jane McFadden. <laughs> Rebecca McGrath. <laughs> Caroline McGuinness. Sheena McIver. <laughs> Samantha McMillan. <laughs> Catherine McMordy. Kiva Morgan. <laughs> Madeline Murphy. <laughs> Lindsay Nelson. Sarah Jane Nicoletti. <laughs> A 
Alicia Ray. Shanine Rooney. Natalie Shanks. Seamus Shannon. Lindsay Shaw. Sinead Smith. <laughs> Adele Totten. <laughs> Corin Waddell. Kerry Waring. <laughs> Kay Zaman. <laughs> I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Mental Health Nursing, Connor Cartmill. Victoria Lilly. <laughs> Natasha McNamee. <laughs> Nicola Taylor. Vincey Augustine. <laughs> Rebecca Bamasile. <laughs> Suzanne Barr. Lindsay Bell. <laughs> Louise Allison Calvert. <laughs> Jennifer Cordner. Brenda Darcy. <laughs> Kevin Dunn. <laughs> Emma Hamel. Nicola Harper. <laughs> Cheryl Harrigan. <laughs> Sarah Hines.
Tanya Hoy. Kelly Lochran. <laughs> Maria McCabe. Valerie McCohey. <laughs> Emir McCloskey. Charlene McElhinney. Janet Magukin. Matthew McKinney. Shannon McMenamin. Judith Rush. <laughs> Everett Sherard. <laughs> Amy Stevenson. Nathan Weir. I present to you for a foundation degree, Dean Brown. I present to you for a Diploma of Higher Education, Tanya Ahmed. Anuska Black. Una Murray. Donna Park. And Chris Seaton. Well, now, wasn't that fantastic? As director of the Open University in Ireland, I could not be any more proud of what you, our graduates, have achieved, often against the odds, with your work, family, and other commitments and oftentimes the many other challenges that life throws in the way. I believe that today you are the most amazing body of graduates anywhere in the world. Yeah. 
You've believed in yourselves, and we've believed in you, all of us, your dedicated tutors and advisors, the expert academics who write your courses, the designers and the technologists who bring those courses to life, and all of the professional services team that make the Open University what it is, second to none. And now you've shown what that belief can achieve. It's no wonder that employers tell us that what they like about Open University graduates is that you're determined and that you're driven. You've juggled study and deadlines with many other demands to achieve your success. But you know, I have been told that there is one thing that's even harder than being an Open University student, and that's living with one. <laughs> now, <laughs> it must be true, all those graduates, because people are clapping. Uh, many of your family members, friends and colleagues are here today, so could I ask all of our graduates to give your families, friends and supporters a huge round of, of applause. When the Open University started back in 1969, our pioneer students and staff really taken a step into the unknown. They put their faith in a, new, a university that was using new masses of teaching and a university that would be open to everyone. Many people thought the Open University would fail, but instead it is now one of the most successful universities in the world. Over two million people have studied with us. Now that's not a university, that's a social movement. And it's you, our students, who make the Open University what it is. But we all owe a huge debt of gratitude to the vision of the university's founders. Foremost amongst them was Jenny Lee, the woman to whom Harold Wilson, the UK Prime Minister at the time, gave the job of taking the idea of a university of the year and making it into a reality. Now, Jenny Lee, her own journey started in a Scottish mining community and she became Minister of State in the UK Government. And she, in no small measure, shaped the Open University into what it is today. She believed that the OU had to be a university for everyone, rich or poor, man or woman, black or white, but that it would do that whilst maintaining the highest of academic standards. And you, our graduates, have achieved those high standards of scholarship, and professional practice that she was determined that we'd maintain while opening up the opportunity to more people than ever before. She was determined too that we would be a respected research university, making discoveries, inventing new products, enabling us to understand each other better and to live peacefully together without endangering our planet. And that curiosity is what drives us, and I'm glad that you chose to join that most human of adventures, and that is to learn and to live and that's what it says on our university crest. Here in Ireland, we continue to take that work forward with significant and growing numbers of people across our island studying for certificates, diplomas and degrees. More than 7,000 students across Northern Ireland are studying with us, and over 69,000 citizens have used our free open learn courses in the last year. Now, for me, those numbers are impressive, but the most important number that I receive every year is our standings in the National Student Survey. In 2022, the Open University was ranked number one university in Northern Ireland for overall student satisfaction once again. That's 18 years in a row. So thank you to our students for providing that feedback. And a huge thank you to all of our staff in Northern Ireland for providing such amazing support day in and day out. Now, as well as our teaching, learning and research work, we commemorated the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement with our first ever podcast series. It's called A Piece of Us, and that's peace with an A, P-E-A-C-E. -E. So when you search for it on where you get your podcasts, make sure it's peace with an A. And you'll find on that uh, link uh, four episodes and these are fresh voices from sport, the arts, media and politics, reflecting on the impact of the Good Friday Agreement, but more importantly, looking forward to the sort of society that they would like to see in Northern Ireland in 25 years' time. 
Now, many of you at the minute will be watching Once Upon a Time in Northern Ireland on BBC Two and BBC iPlayer. This is a five-part series, and it's part of the Open University's partnership with BBC, a partnership that has in the past produced things like Wild Isles, Frozen Planet, Blue Planet, and many more award-winning series. Once Upon a Time in Northern Ireland is a challenging watch. It was also a challenging program to make, and I'm grateful to my colleague, Dr. Philip O'Sullivan, for his contribution as academic consultant on the programme. Graduates, as you leave today, I hope you'll become an ambassador for the Open, Open University and everything we stand for, our values of social and environmental justice, our commitment to inclusion and diversity, and above all, our mission to be open to people, places, methods and ideas. The completion of your qualification means you join a community of Open University alumni around the world and you can continue to keep up with news and you can access careers advice, or you might even want to come back and study, you will remain a member of the Open University family. So do share your experiences with others. Let them know what your journey has meant to you and what it could meet, mean to them. We're hugely proud of you. You'll have heard that from the applause throughout the afternoon. And we're thankful to everyone who supported you on your journey. So with all of the graduates today who can do so, please stand. And families, friends, guests and supporters, I think we need to give this crowd of wonderful people another huge round of applause. So the proceedings of this degree ceremony have been completed and I now declare this meeting of congregation closed. Would all of you in the hall who are able to do so please stand? <laughs>